Hi, and welcome to the part one, what you need before your troop meetings training. This training is approximately 35 minutes long, and you're going to learn about best leader practices, Girl Scout traditions, an investiture ceremony, the Girl Scout program, troop meeting preparation, and the next required training you'll need to take. We're going to start with best leader practices, which will give you general guidelines to follow while being a Girl Scout troop leader. Girl Scouts is an inclusive organization and is open to all girls. As a leader, you need to welcome girls and focus on building community. As a leader, you are not authorized to remove girls from troops. You want to be sure to teach respect for, understanding of, and dignity towards all girls and their families. You also need to foster a sense of belonging to community as a respected and valued peer. We know that there is a lot to learn in Girl Scouts, and we don't expect you to know everything from the start. From the beginning, here's what's important to know. Be a good communicator with the parents in your troop. Always remember to have fun. Don't be hard on yourself if you make a mistake. No one is perfect and we don't expect you to be. If you're not sure about something, please don't be afraid to ask questions. If you need help, you can call on your service unit or contact us at GSNC. Now you're going to learn about Girl Scout traditions. It's important for you to incorporate the following traditions in your troop meetings as they give Girl Scouts a sense of history and helps remind them that they belong to a big, powerful, and inclusive sisterhood. The Girl Scout sign is made by raising three fingers on your right hand with your thumb holding down your pinky. The Girl Scout sign is made while you and the girls in your troop say the Girl Scout promise. You and the girls should say the Girl Scout promise while making the Girl Scout sign to start each of your troop meetings. The picture in this slide shows you how the Girl Scout sign should be made. Saying the Girl Scout promise while making the Girl Scout sign will take practice with your troop. You can have them repeat after you as you say each line until they eventually memorize it. Girls should know the significance of why we hold up three fingers. That's because they represent the three parts of the Girl Scout promise. To serve God in my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. To give you experience saying the Girl Scout promise while making the Girl Scout sign, we're going to practice saying it together now. Are you ready? You can pause this video if you need a second to adjust. Okay, let's start. First, make the Girl Scout sign. With your right hand, put your thumb over your pinky with your three other fingers raised. Now you're going to see each line of the Girl Scout promise pop up on the screen. Say each line out loud with me as you see it. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Good job. That is exactly how you will practice it with your troop. The Girl Scout motto is be prepared. In the 1947 Girl Scout handbook, the motto was explained like this. A Girl Scout is ready to help out wherever she is needed. Willingness to serve is not enough. You must know how to do the job well, even in an emergency. And the same holds true today. The Girl Scout slogan, which has been used since 1912, is do a good turn daily. The slogan is a reminder of the many ways girls can contribute positively to the lives of others. Be sure to teach the motto and slogan to your troop so they know that Girl Scouts are always prepared and ready to help others whenever needed. The quiet sign is a great tool to tell girls to be silent in your troop meetings. You make the quiet sign by simply raising your hand. This signals everyone to stop talking. When one person makes the quiet sign, the next person that sees it should stop talking and raise their hand. 
Using it should help you not raise your voice or shush the girls while trying to get them to be quiet. Just like other things, this will take some time for the girls to learn. Be patient and practice this with them until they get the hang of it. The Girl Scout handshake is something you can teach the girls to do while greeting other Girl Scouts. It can also be used between you and the girls after giving them awards that they've earned. The picture in this slide shows a Girl Scout that was just given an award and afterwards she and the Girl Scout adult did the Girl Scout handshake. This is how we typically see it being used. The handshake is made by shaking hands with the left hand and making the Girl Scout sign with the right. The left hand is nearest to the heart and signifies friendship. During your meetings, you can partner up the girls and have them practice this with each other. You can have the girls rotate until you feel they are comfortable doing it. The friendship circle is something you do with your troop at the end of your meetings. It is made by standing in a circle, crossing your right arm over your left, and clasping hands with friends on both sides. The friendship circle represents the unbroken chain of friendship. That is why you cross your right arm over your left, because it forms a chain. You can also incorporate a squeeze into the circle, where one girl starts by making a silent wish and then squeezes the girl's hand next to her so she can then make her silent wish. Once the squeezes have been passed from hand to hand and everyone is done making a wish, then everyone twists out of the circle by turning clockwise. Doing this with the girls is a fun way to end your meetings. SWAPS stands for Special Whatchamacallits Affectionately Pinned Somewhere. Swapping is the tradition of Girl Scouts exchanging keepsakes. Swaps are generally small in size and can be made out of various materials. You can see some examples of what they can look like in this slide. There are tons of examples online that you can use to give girls ideas on what swaps to make. Generally, Girl Scouts make swaps to match an event, holiday, or occasion. While the girls are making swaps for other troops, remind them to keep one for themselves as a keepsake. Girl Scouts can swap with other Girl Scouts anywhere. However, swapping is mostly done at large events, where girls will be able to swap with a lot of other Girl Scouts. Swaps can be pinned on things like a hat or a jacket. Girls can put swaps on the back of their vest or sash, but they do not belong on the front. Girls typically don't put swaps on the back of their vest or sash, though, because they are uncomfortable to sit with. There is swap safety and etiquette you want to be sure to include while teaching your troop about swaps. Never refuse to swap with another person. You always want to swap face to face, especially if exchanging addresses or email information. You should avoid using sharp objects while making swaps. And only use food products if they are individually wrapped. Now you're going to see a Nassau County Girl Scout show you how to make a simple swap. Hi, my name is Charlotte. Today we are going to be making the Seeds of Friendship Swap. You're going to take a tag and put your information on the back. But, I like to use stickers. Then you're going to take your tag and you're going to put it in a mini bag. You are going to take a pinch of daisy seeds and a pinch of gold and silver confetti. Then you're going to close your bag. Then you take a safety pin and pin it through. Ta-da! You're done with your first swap. Once your swap collection grows, you can put them on hats or banners. Bye! Songs are an important tradition in Girl Scouts. There are tons of songs that you can incorporate in your meetings. A popular Girl Scout song you can start with is Make New Friends. Overall, songs are important because they help girls express themselves. They also help girls celebrate accomplishments and ultimately form a bond with each other. 
Now you're going to see what resources you can use to help you incorporate songs into your meetings. So now we're going to show you two online resources that can help you learn about Girl Scout songs. The first is a video that GSUSA posted. So the first step is to go to GSUSA's website, which is girlscouts.org. Then once you get to their website, you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. On the bottom right, you're going to click the third icon there, which is the play button. Click that. And that'll take you directly to GSUSA's YouTube channel. And then in the search bar on the right hand side, you're going to type in outdoors, songs and games. And then the first video that pops up, that's the video that you want to watch. And now even though this video is titled outdoors, songs and games, that doesn't mean that you can't take the songs that they have in that video and do it indoors or virtually with your troop. So once you click on the video, you're going to see about a five minute video that pops up and it's going to give you all different ideas of different song titles. You're going to see some great visuals here of girls singing and interacting with each other doing different songs and games. So it's a great thing to watch to learn about all different ways that girls can be engaged with songs. So then the second resource that you can use to learn about Girl Scout songs is an article on the Girl Scout blog. So again, we're going to go to GSUSA's website, girlscouts.org, and we're going to go to the same place. Scroll down all the way to the bottom, and now we're going to click the B for blog. So once you're there, you're going to go to the search bar on the top right, and now you're going to type in five camp songs every Girl Scout should know. And then click search and then click continue. So even though this is titled five camp songs, these are still songs that again you can sing for any occasion with your troop. And the great thing about this article is that they give you the song titles with videos so that you can watch and learn different movements that might go along with the songs. And again, you can either watch this with your troop to learn or you can watch this and then teach them yourself separately. Throughout the year, you and your troop can celebrate some very special days in Girl Scouting. February 22nd is World Thinking Day, which is when we celebrate the sisterhood we share with Girl Scouts in other countries called Girl Guides. It also celebrates the birthdays of Girl Guide and Girl Scout founder Robert Lord Baden-Powell and World Chief Guide Olav Lady Baden-Powell. They inspired Julia Gordon Lowe to start Girl Scouts in America. March 12th is the Girl Scout birthday which commemorates the day in 1912 when Julia Gordon Lowe officially registered the organization's first 18 girl members in Savannah, Georgia. Girl Scout Week is celebrated each March, starting with Girl Scout Sunday and ending with Girl Scout Sabbath on a Saturday, and it always includes Girl Scout's birthday, March 12th. Girl Scout Sunday and Girl Scout Sabbath give girls an opportunity to attend their place of worship and be recognized as a Girl Scout. April 22nd is Girl Scouts Leaders Day, which honors leaders who work as leaders and mentors in partnership with girls. October 31st marks the Girl Scouts of the USA Founders' birthday, Juliet Gordon Lowe. You just learned that we celebrate World Thinking Day on February 22nd and why we celebrate this day, but now you should know what girls can earn. World Thinking Day is promoted by the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, which is WEGS for short. WEGS is an organization that works to educate and bring Girl Scouts and Girl Guides from other countries together. Each year your troop can earn the World Thinking Day Award, which gives girls a chance to learn about issues that affect girls internationally. The picture you see in this slide is an example of what the award has looked like, but a new award with a new theme 
with different requirements is released annually for girls to earn. So please consider discussing this with the girls while planning activities that they want to do throughout the year. Ceremonies in Girl Scouts mark special events throughout the year. You want to incorporate ceremonies to commemorate the girls' accomplishments or just add something special to the beginning or end of your meetings. Girls can plan a ceremony around a theme, such as friendship or nature, and express themselves in words or song. Here are some ceremonies you should be aware of starting out as a new leader. Bridging ceremonies mark a girl's move from one level of Girl Scouting to another. For example, if your troop is finishing up the Daisy level, then they would be moving on to the Brownie level, so then you would do a bridging ceremony for them. Troops typically do this at the end of the year, or they wait until the following new troop year. Flag ceremonies can be done at the beginning or end of your meeting. They can also be a part of any activity that honors the American flag. A Girl Scout's own ceremony is a girl-planned ceremony that lets girls explore their feelings around any topic they choose. Opening and closing ceremonies are short ceremonies with activities you do at the beginning and end of your troop meetings. You'll learn more about this later on in this training. To learn more about how to plan ceremonies and Girl Scout traditions, check out our short and snappy videos under the Traditions and Ceremonies section. Now we're going to highlight the first ceremony you should do with your troop, an investiture ceremony. An investiture ceremony welcomes new members, girls and adults, into Girl Scouts for the first time. If the girls in your troop haven't been in Girl Scouts before, you want to work with them to plan an investiture ceremony. The ceremony can be any time during the year, but many troops tend to do investiture ceremonies in the beginning of the year as a kickoff. Any girls that may join your troop after other girls, say they join mid-year, also need to be invested if it is their first time in Girl Scouts. During an investiture ceremony, girls should receive their membership pin. You as the leader would give this to them during the ceremony. However, the girls do have to earn their membership pin by doing three good deeds. During the ceremony, you need to place the membership pin upside down on the bottom of each girl's insignia tab. This shows that they still need to complete these deeds. After they go home and complete the three good deeds, their parent or guardian can turn the pin right side up so you can see that they've completed them. Have girls share in a meeting the three good things that they did. This will allow you to recognize their accomplishments and will give them the practice they need to talk about one of the first great things they did as a Girl Scout. There is no right or wrong way to plan an investiture ceremony, but you want to make sure that the girls are involved in the planning process. If you have a younger troop, you will have a more active role in helping them plan. You can ensure they are involved by asking them about how they want the ceremony to look and things they want to say or add, like their favorite poems, songs, or stories. Here's a quote from a Girl Scout leader on how her troop planned their ceremony. She said, We did a Harry Potter theme, floating candles. They wore a sorting hat and talked about why they wanted to be a Girl Scout and their favorite Harry Potter character and how they fit in with the Girl Scout law. The hat then sorted them into cadets and seniors. We played themed music and had lots of cool decorations and snacks. So as you can see, girls can be as creative as they want while planning the ceremony. If girls want to incorporate materials like candles, be sure to take safety precautions. Refer to the Volunteer Essentials Guide and Safety Activity Checkpoints Manual, which you learned about in your orientation. As a reminder, both of those resources can be found on our website. Now you're going to learn about the Girl Scout program, which will include things that girls can earn, like badges, awards, pins, and patches. You'll also learn about uniform guidelines, so you'll know where everything should go on the girls' uniforms. Girls can earn badges, petals, leaves, 
awards, and pins in Girl Scouts. GSUSA, our parent organization, creates them and their requirements. Each of them has a main topic that girls will learn about. Many are available at each level, and you will see that there are new ones that come out each year. Overall, they allow girls to explore their interests and learn new skills. Most importantly to earn them, girls need to complete requirements. Shortly, we'll talk about where you can find those requirements. Now we want to highlight awards that girls can earn from completing a journey. There are seven journeys in each Girl Scout level. A journey teaches girls leadership skills. They'll learn about a main topic, and then they'll spend time doing several activities to learn about that topic really well. They need to spend more time learning about a journey versus a badge or pedal because at the end of a journey, girls do a take action project. A take action project is where girls take what they've learned in a journey and then make a lasting change in their community. After completing a journey, girls earn journey awards, which are the images you're seeing in this slide. And then after they get the awards, they can proudly display them on the front of their uniform. The highest awards that girls can earn in Girl Scouts are the bronze, silver, and gold awards. Juniors in 4th and 5th grade can earn the bronze award. Cadets in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade can earn the silver award. Seniors in 9th and 10th grade and ambassadors in 11th and 12th grade can earn the gold award. Be sure you introduce the opportunity of earning these awards to your troop when they are of age. The best part about girls earning the highest awards is that they will learn to discover an issue they are passionate about, connect with community experts to learn more, and take action to make the world a better place. There are fun patches and council badges and patches available. You can give girls fun patches simply after they have participated in an activity. Girls are not learning a specific skill set, so there are no requirements for girls to complete fun patches. At Girl Scouts of Nassau County, we create our own badge and patch programs. Girls will learn a specific skill set from these badges and patches, so there are set requirements for girls to complete to earn them. Now you'll see where you can access the requirements for our Council Badges and Patches. To get to our Council Patch Programs and Council Badges, the first thing that you need to do is to go to our Council website, gsnc.org. And then once you get there, you're going to click the Programs tab on the top. And then click Patch Programs on the left-hand side. And then you're going to see a full list of all the programs that you have to choose from. So you'll be able to click in each of these individually. And once you do that, you'll see a summary of the patch program or badge program. And you'll also see an image of what the patch or the badge looks like. And you'll also see a direct link to the program requirements. And this will be a PDF that you can print or save, whatever works for you. You may also notice that there is links to a program evaluation in some of the patch programs or badge programs, and there also may be a request form that you would need to fill out as well. The great thing about Council Patch Programs and Council Badges is that it gives you more options of things to do with girls, and the topics of these programs are things that may not necessarily be included in our traditional badges and awards so it gives you more variety and we're always updating this list we're always adding and giving you new things to do so it's really important to always check back to this page to see what's here and available for you it's important to know the proper placement of where insignia should go on a Girl Scout uniform here we're showing you a daisy vest on the front of a vest, tunic, or sash is where the American flag, council ID set, troop numbers, insignia tab, and world trefoil pin are placed. 
This insignia is automatically given to girls, but it should still be placed on the front of a uniform. Other things that girls need to earn, like membership stars and discs, badges, awards, etc., should be placed on the front as well. On the back of a vest, tunic, or sash is where fun patches and council patches are placed. Remember, if it's a patch, it belongs on the back. Below this video, there will be a link to visual guides that will show you the proper placement of where to place insignia on a Girl Scout uniform. Now we're going to highlight the membership stars and discs and the World Trefoil pin. The girls in your troop should get a membership star and disc for each year they complete in Girl Scouts. For example, if a girl has completed one year as a daisy, she should have one membership star and one blue disc. As you can see in this slide, the discs fit directly behind the star and are a different color based on the Girl Scout level. The World Trefoil Pin shows that as a Girl Scout, you are part of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, or WAGS for short. On the pin is the WAGS symbol. Each part of the symbol has a meaning. The three leaves represent the Girl Scout promise, with a flame that stands for loving all the people in the world. The compass needle is to guide you, and the two stars are the Girl Scout promise and law. The outer circle represents the World Association, and the golden yellow trefoil on a bright blue background stands for the sun shining over all the children of the world. Be sure to teach girls about this after giving them the pin so they know the significance. To put on all badges, awards, and patches on a Girl Scout uniform, you can either iron them on, although for specific patches you can't do this, so be sure to check with our GSNC shop first. You can also use Badge Magic, which is a peel and stick adhesive, or you can sew them on by hand or with a sewing machine. If you're interested in purchasing Badge Magic, you can do so by getting it from our GSNC shop at our council building or from the shop section of our website. Now you're ready to learn about the Girl Scout program materials you can use to help you plan your meetings. The Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting binders are available at each Girl Scout level. These binders will give you a general overview of each level, a list of badges and awards girls can earn, and some badge requirement pamphlets. Although these binders do include some badge requirement pamphlets, they don't include all of them. So it's important to know that you may have to purchase some badge requirement pamphlets separately, as all of them are not included in the Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting binders. You can purchase them at the GSNC shop, or you can go to the shop section of our website. If your troop decides to work on journeys, there are two places to access lesson plans, either from the journey books or the volunteer toolkit. All of the journey lesson plans are on the volunteer toolkit, but only three are available in the books. The journey lesson plans on the volunteer toolkit are planned to fit your meetings. You're given a set amount of activities, a time frame, and a list of what materials you need. The journey books provide you with lesson plans, but they are spread out over a much longer period of time. You can condense the activities in the journey books, but you'll have to read through them and take the time to customize what's in them. You can see in this slide what some of the journey books look like. There is an adult book and girl book. The adult book provides you with lesson plans and the girl book has stories and activities for the girls to do. Ultimately, it's up to you and the girls to decide what journeys they want to do and what resources you want to use in order to access the lesson plans. Our GSNC publications are great tools that you and the girls should use while planning your meetings. Possibilities is our program and event guide, which provides you with all of the program opportunities available to your troop. Most of these programs allows girls to earn badges, patches, and awards while participating. Usually Possibilities is mailed to you twice a year, once for the spring and once for the fall. 
Currently, a digital copy will be sent to you where you can see many virtual programs that your troop may be interested in. A copy is also available on our website. Girlfriends is our newsletter that shows what other troops are involved in. It provides you with the opportunity to hear about the outcome of past events while also hearing about future events within the Council. A new Girlfriends issue will be mailed to you every six to eight weeks. A copy is also available on our website. Last we have our Camp Guide, which provides you with all of our in-person day and sleepaway camp options for your troop. In-person camp activities aren't available right now, so currently we're offering our online camping program called Blue Bay On Your Block. Girls can join some of our camp staff on Zoom Monday through Friday for an exciting hour-long activity that is designed to engage and facilitate interaction between them and staff. So be sure to check out our website for more details on these resources and consider using them while planning activities with your troop. As you learned in your orientation, the Volunteer Toolkit, also known as the VTK, provides you with lesson plans for badges, awards, and journeys. You can create a year plan, which means that you can record each of your meetings so all of your troop's activities and achievements are in one organized place. With each meeting, you'll see the estimated time it will take, you'll get resources like worksheets and videos, and you'll even be provided with discussion points so you'll know how to explain each activity to your troop. You will also get a materials list so you can figure out how much each of your meetings will cost and not have to spend time writing out a shopping list. You'll also be able to access your troop roster and other digital resources like uniform guides and other quick links that will help you and your troop. The best part is that you and your co-leader have access to your troop's year plan at the same time, so you can plan together, but you can do it online and not have to be in the same place. Be sure to utilize the VTK to save you time while planning with your troop. Even though everyone's daily routines may have changed, you can still provide the Girl Scouting experience to girls at home. They can still participate in Girl Scout activities and earn awards, badges, and patches. Go to our website, gsnc.org, and be sure to look at our Girl Scouting at Home page. There you will find many activities you can lead virtually with your troop, like utilizing our at-home program and badge guides. These badges and programs have been customized so that you have everything you need within the guides to run the meeting and for your troop to earn a badge, patch, or award. Also be sure to check out our virtual experiences where girls can do things like play games, participate in a paint party, and much more. In Girl Scouts, girls are not required to complete a certain number of badges, patches, awards, etc. It is up to each troop to decide what and how many things they want to do. We know that each troop's needs and interests will be different, so this gives you and your troop flexibility. Although troops have this flexibility, goal setting is important. Have the girls set a goal of what and how many things they want to do. Doing this will help motivate them to earn things. While deciding what they want to do, you need to remind them to remember how often you meet, how much time you have each meeting, and to stay within your budget. We have now come to the last section of this training, troop meeting preparation. So now you know all of the materials and requirements behind the Girl Scout program and you're ready to learn how to plan your troop meetings. The first step to properly planning your Girl Scout meetings is to make sure that they are always girl-led. Girl-led is when girls are involved in the decision-making process as early as possible to the extent of their abilities. When the girls are in younger levels, like daisies and brownies, you as the leader will be more involved in making decisions. However, the girls should always be included in this. As they get older, they should have more and more responsibility. We recommend that you give the girls as much responsibility you think they can handle and then a little more. It's important for them to make decisions as to what activities they are involved in and to learn how to plan. 
Be patient with this process. Girls need to make decisions and learn from their mistakes. As they continue to lead their Girl Scout experience, they will grow to be empowered and confident decision makers. A suggested way to plan with your troop is to ask girls to share their interests. This will help narrow down what pedals, badges, journeys, and awards they will like. For example, girls may say they like animals or sports. This will help you target which badges and awards fits those categories. You can also have girls pick their favorite badges, pedals, and awards, then have them vote on a certain amount that fits into your time frame for the year. As you're planning, be sure to discuss finances and decisions on spending troop money with them. Make sure they understand what things cost. They need to know what works in the troop's budget and what doesn't. Check out our girl-led short and snappy videos on our website under the How to Be Girl-Led section. This will give you more tips on how you can include girls in the planning process. Now that you know how girls should be involved in planning troop activities, you want to take steps to ensure that your meetings stay girl-led. A great way to do this is by creating a caper chart. A caper is a job that girls can take ownership of during your meetings. This teaches them responsibility and allows them to take the lead with something. You can rotate the capers individually, in pairs, or in groups. This gives the girls a chance to do each caper. A caper chart can be made in any way that works for your troop. It can be a caper spinner, where the girls get to spin the wheel to see what caper they will be doing that day. You can have a themed caper, where you will have the girls' favorite animals next to each caper. You can do a traditional caper chart, where you take a poster board and list the girls' names and jobs. Or you can do a caper necklace, where each necklace has the name of each caper. The girls that have the caper responsibility will wear that necklace for the day. Some caper ideas are, girls can be the promise and law leader, the friendship circle leader, the cleanup or attendance leader, or even lead activities like crafts, songs, snacks, and supplies. We have now come to the end of this training. The next required training you will need to take is Part 2, How to Run Your Troop Meetings. The email you received from your Volunteer Experience Manager explains how to complete that training. And remember, all of the resources you just learned about from this training are available below this video. Thank you so much for completing this step to becoming a Girl Scout Troop Leader. If you have any questions, please email us at customercare at gsnc.org.